Ooh, cinematic. Oh. Dramatic. Baker Street. London. 18 something something. Oh, it does feel good to be in Blighty. And who do we have here? Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidier houses in war-torn Afghanistan. <laughs> Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. <laughs> served my supper. Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Ooh, hmm. sass. So aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master <laughs> of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. The sass factor is right there. Are you standing on my bed? Well, I find that usually it's good to have a good night's sleep within the bed, rather than standing on it, Mr. Holmes. Oh, the classic drinks cabinet. And we're looking for newspapers, okay. Since when has tabloid propaganda possibly been the secret to un unveiling, or what other perfectly good English word that could be used to unravel an investigation? There we go. Hello, everybody. Rambling on here, welcome to Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. This is the first time I have played a game of the Sherlock Holmes series of games, as I know there are a few that exist, but this looks to be another wonderfully horror-filled, Lovecraftian, cthulhu -y good time. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new game for me. Let's go and get straight into the old Investigator Rooney's. Start by having a look at this. London Advertiser, September 28th, 1882. Tensions between England and Sweden are running high after a series of unfortunate mishaps during a recent visit to London by Swedish Princess Ildur. Hmm. Chief among the scandal was the embarrassment of the British diplomatic corps as a result of an unexplained disappearance of Princess Ildur's personal bodyguard. The long-time member of her inner circle took the opportunity to explore London whilst off duty and never returned from his late night promenade. A spokesperson for the police assures the advertiser that they are confident the bodyguard will be located as he is a striking representative of the Scandinavian people. Ah. Now, as the game loaded up, there was a rather smart and useful, like, FYI alert that came up on screen, basically saying that there is judgment and i've forgotten the terminology that was used exactly but basically archaic not niceness towards people wow that's the vocabulary i came with archaic not nicest that's very embarrassing for someone who wants to speak as partially as I do, but basically it's an FYI, people were dicks to people back in the day, unfortunately they still are today. I do not know for gospel whether that means that in order to try and have historical accuracy there will be some unpleasant use of language and description within this game, or whether it's been modernised to try and limit that as much as possible. Either way, let's use this as a public service announcement of please be aware that this is purely for the historical accuracy and the immersion of the video game and not a representation of those who have made the game nor myself. Hence why I am fascinated in Lovecraft's wonderful cthulhu -y, incredible universe but do not to support the ideals that the real life human man had. Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. Interesting enough that we read about it, but uh, let's have a look at this book. Whoa! That's uh, the front of it. Visit Barnes Bookshop. Your order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. 
Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. I can't disagree. That is lovely service. You know, you're telling me the third clue is not the supper of which we ate? What's this letter then? Yellow? Uh, Vogel? Another letter from Werner. I never reply, but they keep coming. That was not the word Werner, unless their name was Werner Vogel. I don't see the strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. A missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick. Who? No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. So Watson threw out the newspaper because he believed that someone had wiped their ass with it? Genuinely? What, I saw poo smears on your newspaper, so I put it in the bin? I mean, to be fair, do you know what the streets of London were like back in the day? The amount of horse muck that's going around, it's perfectly possible that the newsboy dropped it and our copy happened to be one that was, you know, in the muck. I don't really want to go rummaging in a dustbin for it. I'm Sherlock Holmes for crying out loud. I'm sure I could afford another copy. Anyways, is there anything we can interact with in here before we go out? I mean, did we lose this game of chess? Is that why we got bored of it? Is that a bearskin rug? Crikey, wow. I mean, I suppose it was accurate for the day. Ah, my violin. Oh, oh. I can interact with it. Somewhat. There was a... Touch it. Oh, and that chair. <laughs> cool. Physics. Huzzah. Right, downstairs we go. I mean, we're going to get absolutely soaked. Can we find our coat anywhere? We're, you know, we're not a monster. No? Do any of these doors? Is there a coat cupboard? I mean, at least you have a jacket, man. No. It's raining today, so why not dress as something, I've only just noticed this in the top corner, more appropriate for the weather. Open the casebook with start, and navigate to the wardrobe tab with RB, and put on a hat. Well, let's, shall we? Okay. Wrong button. Try that again. What are we, five minutes in? Ah. <sighs> well, this is interesting. Uh, this is a book. It's a very cool map. Look at that. Oh, wonder what those white dots are. Maybe it's... Oh, is it like... Ah, yeah, you can, you can tell there's like a tunnel there, so it's like you can walk underneath that. Gotcha. Ah, okay. Oh, very fancy. Very fancy if we get invited to a duel or proffer a bit of rum. Rough and, rough and tumble's a sexual thing, isn't it? Oh, God. I meant like... I mean, like the Robert Downey Jr. films where he gets into a fist fight. It looks a bit more like that get up. Instead of just embarrass myself, as always. Uh, a jacket. Oh, this will... Ooh. I like this coat. This will do very nicely. Okay, and... Wrong button. Brain cells? It's gone. Use the trigger. Ah, yes, a hat. Now, what hat would be good with this? Ah, yes, it's that. Oh, what was the old comedian who wore that? The fedora, isn't it? Wasn't it Tommy something? Anyways. Oh, perfect. Yes. People love the hat. 221B Baker Street. Raining today. Yes, we've already done that, so we will skip. Ah, the rubbish bin. Inspect it closely. It was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. Potting soil. The plants. Okay. So our copy of the strand was thrown because. Why does it let me zoom in again? Oh. What's this? A cactus spine. Ah. If it gets in your skin. It's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. See, Watson. The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. 
Are you sure we're not just overthinking? <laughs> Holmes, you, you have no enemies. Nobody could possibly want to murder you. RT to run. Ooh, that is important. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand Ooh. here. Intent. Nudge, nudge. You there, boy. Do you have another copy of the strand? My first has been muddied with potting soil. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. Then why Lost. were you advertising it? So then why are you still here? Yeah. Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. Street smart. This kid's from 1882 and he's got more street smarts than me. I could just quit the playthrough. This is like, this is mind blowing. <laughs> How am, I meant to, how am I meant to defeat Cthulhu if this street smart little urchin is already smarter than me? Oh dear me. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here. Nothing gets past me, mister. Oh, go on Tell then. Me, did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Yes. Hmm. Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Oh, Dr. Watson. Oh, he's smart. Cool. Now I can take the day off. <laughs> right, let's go top to bottom. What did he do to the paper? Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared because I wasn't. I had to protect the merchandise. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. At the merchandise. So what, you like shielded your newspapers? So what was it, like a crate falling off a carriage? A gunshot? Which way did Odd. You Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. I apologise, you were doing your job, mate. That's yeah, really good. You were protecting your merchandise as well, like... You're a kid who's like... Really good with the old smarty smarts. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears. If you have more shillings. Plenty more shillings to go around, young boy. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. What's this 11 out of 50? Am I accumulating points for something? I wonder where we need to go next. Uh, you've got a new... Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. In case the urchin's going to continue interrupting, let's quickly go back into the house, where there's no rain either. Right. We could do it in the doorway, it's not like, um... Oh, what's the lady who works here? Gosh. Mrs. Tinkerbell, can't remember, not important at this moment. You've got a new question in your mind palace. Open the case book with start, then navigate to the mind palace. Inside, select the relevant pieces of evidence to deduce the answer. It will skip it as we've now... So, oh, is this where we saw the scary brain cells? Is that what we need to do? Yes. Okay, so it's this top one. Who ruined the strand? Select. Look from barns, actor spine, potentially poisoned, items, left trigger, right trigger. Help. Mind Palace. In each chapter, questions will arise in the course of your investigation. Questions are shown in the Mind Palace. This must be where we are. Answer all questions to progress to the next chapter. Uh, this icon indicates there's a new question. Uh, press start. Yes, yes, yes. In the Mind Palace tab, select the question you wish to answer, which is the only one available at this time. After selecting a question, try to answer it by linking the relevant evidence. All evidence is broken into three categories, and each category appears on a different screen, which we navigate through via the left and right trigger. Items, documents, and observations are the categories. When all correct links have been made, the evidence will be combined and answer oh, the answer will be revealed. Often you will not have to often you will not have all the correct evidence to answer each question, so keep investigating until you do. I'm guessing in this tutorial introduction question, we probably do. Answering a question with correct evidence on the first try grants you a bonus score. Oh, okay, so it pays to get it right first time. Okay, so let's think this through. Let's try and be Sherlock. We don't have a cocktail of drugs to put into our system. We've got to use brain power. And I've just said that a street urchin has more street smarts than me, so, you know, this can't go wrong. Now, 
Who ruined the strand? Can I go back for a second? Is this the evidence we have so far? Can we, like, flick through this? This looks like a better way of going through it. The newsboy's testimony. The young newspaper seller didn't see much. He noticed a suspicious man approaching the house and heard a loud noise. Let's say gunshot, the, the loudest it could possibly be. Although, would it... I, I'm sure he'd probably acknowledge it was a gunshot, if it was a gunshot. You know, it's that discernible, right? Perhaps I'm overthinking it. Let's go through the rest. He said that the man was kneeling at our doorstep afterwards. So, putting the newspaper through the letterbox? But lost sight of the person due to his customers. Apparently the man was carrying a stack of books. Book from Barnes. Among our morning deliveries is a book for Watson. It was from Mr. Barnes, the bookseller, who prefers to do del So is this person who was kneeling down... So yeah, if he has a stack of books, could it have been Mr. Barnes who was making deliveries himself? Obviously, beyond just Mr. Watson, clearly had multiple deliveries. Attached to the book is Barnes's business card, which includes the address of his store just around the corner, so within walking distance if we go back outside. We've read the advertiser, cactus spine potentially poisoned, we have read about the rest of the newspaper is damp and dirty with potting soil, yes, and the strand is missing, so is, are these our two bits? The newsboy's testimony and the book from Barnes? Based on what we've got, that makes the most sense. It was Barnes who was delivering the book for Watson, but at the same time poisoning a cactus stem for me? Okay, so... These bits are green. Who ruined the strand? It must be the newsboy's testimony. That's... yellow slash... plain? Let's call that colour plain. Now there's a blue one, so would it be the book from Barnes or the cactus by Who ruined the strand? It's the book from Barnes, right? These are the bits that make the most sense. Porter got it wrong, but no! Sweet! Mr. Barnes is involved in the scheme. The newsboy said a suspicious man was carrying a stack of books. And this morning, Mr. Barnes, the local bookseller, delivered a novel for Dr. Watson. The cactus spy for assassination and a loud bang. A visit to Mr. Barnes in order. Hell yeah, we did it! Now we go out and have a chat about it? Come now, Mr. Holmes, murder? Yes, Barnes. Yes. Has his murder, but he also has his scruples. Scruples? Every pawn knows it's part of a game. Ah, that's what we're going with, is it? That is involved, but perhaps not. The master trying to think of seriously, I've just cracked this part and I can't even think of a decent chess pun. Is not the Queen's Gambit. Yeah, let's go for that. You can pick evidence for quick access to the information from your casebook. Open the casebook with start, pin the evidence by pressing X. Try to find the bookshop. Okay, that's our new objective. We still have our hat. Let's go. Um, just around the corner. Well, here's the nearest corner. Oh, we could sprint with... Yes! Oh, we can't go down there. It's under construction. So let's try up here. That This is a, this is a pub. It's an, on Earth? That's very scary. Wow. Can we interact with this? No? Okay. Lock and key shop. Um, no, this is Miss Thornadier's Farm Fresh. Where's it? Oh, Barnes. Right, okay. Oh, it's got many of the, uh... Got Britain, Britain, England, Australia? New Zealand? 
Odd that it feels it needs to have more of the Commonwealth flags involved, but okay. New books in the store. Charles Dickens, uh, M. Gogol, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, might I recommend, just so that you don't ruin the book or see the words run, that you might want to just read it indoors. The logic of some people. Even I don't have to be homes to know. Not going to read a book in the rain. Is this Watson? Who's this? Do you even have enemies yes. that would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. There are plenty of people who would want to kill Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Barnes, I presume. Ooh, observe. Okay, is this a time limit? What's with the white bar at the top? Oh, immediately I can investigate him. Uh, is it the glasses or... Is that a black eye? Bags under eyes. The effects of overwork. Ah. Uh, oh, what's with the hand? Ew. Sir, you sell these books, which means you hold on to them. Newspaper ink. Ah, from delivering my newspaper this morning, perhaps. The contents of the book, is that important? Oh, I could, oh, I could practically 360 this man. Check out that posterior. The man works out. Oh, I see some yellow dotaroonies. Leans heavily on the right leg. Ah. Yes, there's a bend in the knee here on the left. Oh, and let me guess. Something to do with the filthiness of your shoes? No. The rear of the shoe. High heels wants to look taller. Oh, okay. Oh, hello. Newspaper ink wants to look taller. A sore left leg and the effects of overwork. Mr. Barnes has blackmail victim or workaholic. Oh, am I getting to determine what picture I believe or what role Mr. Barnes is playing within this assassination attempt? Mr. Barnes has large bags under his eyes, the result of poor sleep and stress. He has developed a limp, likely the result of an attack. He wears high heels to look taller or stronger, presumably to deter future violence. And Mr. Barnes is being threatened by someone who might be involved in a plot against me. I mean, he hasn't come forward and he's hiding a lot. So I would suggest threatened, but let's have a look at workaholic. Mr. Barnes has developed a limp and has large bags under his eyes as a result of long hours of intense work. Not with a loud, not with a loud bang, as confirmed by our newsboy. No, it's not workaholic. He's not very confident and tries to appear taller by wearing high heels. Either of the the heel descriptions could be applicable. It seems unlikely that such a person would be involved in a murder plot, even if the ink on his hands suggests he is the one who soiled the newspaper. True. Nevertheless, Mr. Barnes could be a pawn in a bigger plan without his knowledge. Let's just quickly review what we know so far. There was a loud bang, and I think that is the determining point as to whether we choose workaholic or blackmail victim. If we ignore the loud bang, developed a limp and large bags, suggesting that both of those contribute to long hours of intense work, but in a bookshop? I mean, what reason would you have for having one leg worse than another working in a bookshop? The bang suggests he's been injured in some way, but if he's the one trying to assassinate me, why would he be then the victim of a loud bang, unless he's being followed? And that would suggest to me a blackmail victim and someone is following him to ensure he does the job. Which would then, for me, say that that loud bang would definitely be a gunshot again. Gunshot into the leg? Or, again, what if it was an accident and it's a crate that's fallen from a passing by carriage? Then it's accidental. 
And if it was a gunshot, perhaps he'd be on crutches. So if it, yeah, if it was a gunshot, that's more severe than just, you know, having a limp. We haven't seen him walk and grunting like he's in extreme pain, but he is just standing here without any medical assistance that's obvious. And when we have just a cactus thing, is he the one who's provided the cactus spine? If not, then it could have been put in there in the newspaper without his knowledge, and he has simply tried to deliver. No, because the, yeah, even if the ink on his hand suggests he's the one who soiled the newspaper. And if that's potting plant, cactuses go in potting plants, so he would be a worse. He... So I think he's got to be a blackmail victim, because he has a certain level of knowledge. If he has the, the ink and muddiness on his hands, he has tampered with the newspaper, not just taken it. If he's just delivered it, there'll be significantly less ink on his hands. He would have just been holding that and the book through the letterbox, on with your day. He didn't do something quite right. He's a blackmail victim. That's what I think. And something to try and deter future violence? Yeah. That is our character portrait. Was this a right or wrong answer? Ooh, I hadn't considered that. Let's see. Mr. Barnes, a word. <gasps> Surprised to see me. Oh, for goodness sake. Run off. Mr. Barnes, Who's do be a gentleman. Who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please... Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you coming. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, Please? I could, but I am deep in the weeds with work. Weeds? Really the, more uh, plant-related jokes? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with... Uh, with important things. <laughs> and with uh, people who would be very surprised to see you're still alive. I'll take you to pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're 20 out of 50. What am I accumulating points for? Dog? <gasps> Dog! Oh, uh, press LB to highlight an interactive variant in the environment. Get that later, dog. So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? Yeah, who's a good boy? And that's you. I see something flicker over here. The ladder is broken, recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. Well now, that would potentially explain a limp. That would absolutely explain a limp, which is why now the loud bang- Oh my god, is this guy just awoke? No, he's clearly scared, so he seems bribed. That would also suggest- Oh god, I don't know. Right, press LB. Oh, scanner mode. Love it. Just interact with this then. I could hardly imagine anything more macabre. I'm not cultured enough to know what that means. Is that is that the style of painting? Or is that the artist? Moving on, there was something over here. Ah yes. Zero of two, okay. The jungle book! And a certain Mr. Disney is going to love this one day. <gasps> Book of the Occult. No? No? I mean, I, I guess at this stage. I already know it's a Lovecraftian occult-based game, but if we do play it to the character, even just jumping to the occult right now would be a stretch for Sir Sherlock Holmes. So, yeah, fair enough. We ignore it. Oh. What? Something to do with Egypt? Basics of crypto analysis. Yes. Photography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. It does. Okay, that's one of two. Anything in this pile? Oh, oh. Everlasting plants. Ah, the potting plant, the potting dirt that was on the newspaper, and the dirt on the man's hands, and the fact that the stinger was from a cactus. Clearly, a potted plant. 
Right. That was very helpful. May I scan again? Okay, over there. Well, that's just the door. And then we go back to Mr. Barnes from there. So do we have to... Oh, I reckon we're going to have to do another... I was going to say mind meld. Oh my god, I'm such a Trekkie nerd. Mind palace. <laughs> we're going to have to do another mind palace to determine some questions at the door to coax Mr. Barnes out. Right, I get it. Uh, anything to do with these books? Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake? I mean, these are very occult-looking things. We should probably be reading into these, don't you think, Shirley? Oh. Oh, instead you want to look outside. The view London has to offer. Oh, even you know that... Yes. Typical London. Very, very dreary. Oh! Otted plant! In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. As we want a confirmation of my death before he... If I had died, he would have put this into... Uh, newer plants. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, and this pile of books? An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. Oh, okay, to really hammer home. Hey, these are the plants that you need to be looking at. Gotcha. Do obviously... Whomever is interested. What do you think so far? Barnes has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. Agreed. All right, then. Then... Book class scan. The only two things I can interact with are the door to leave, and, of course, Mr. Watson, and the door to speak with Barnes again. Okay, so... Welcome back. All right, then. Let's have a look at this newer array of information. So, I assume we need to focus on the new information that we found here. Coax Mr. Barnes out. Dead flowers on display. That almost feels like it should be pinned. It's that important. There's a bouquet of dead flowers in the window of Barnes's shop. It is placed on an improvised stand made from a pile of books. It seems that Mr. Barnes wants to make sure that the flowers are clearly visible. Mycroft's agents use similar signals to communicate with each other. Exotic Plants Catalog. Catalog of exotic, uh, exotic plants on Barnes's counter. The name of the catalog reads Everlasting Plants for an Everlasting Love. Sounds like like a 2000 Everlasting Love song. But anyways. Um, <laughs> oh yes, cryptology books. There are several books about cryptology on Barnes's counter. The books are worn and not for sale. He has frequently consulted them and left annotations. The portrait that we have made of Mr. Barnes, potentially incorrectly. Broken ladder, a relatively new step ladder in a corner of Barnes's bookshop, has a freshly broken rung. Is that what they call a step? Hmm. Newsboy's testimony, book from Barnes, the advertiser. And of course saying that he's involved in the scheme. Maybe we should be, like, pinning this. Okay, let's move. Yes. Why is Barnes acting so strangely? Okay. Let's take a look. We have three different colours here. We have plain, green, and blue. So these are the five available here. Don't forget there were bonus points if we do this right first time. I think the information gathered within the bookshop will obviously be the most pertinent. Dead flowers on display, 100%. Mr. Barnes involved in the scheme, the newsboy's testimony, or the London advertiser. Well, that to me would be Mr. Barnes is involved in the scheme. Right? Unless... Something's just popped into my head. When we scanned using the LB, we were given the option to go outside. I just want to check there's nothing outside that might reveal more information, because 
one of the three points from here was looking across the road. So is there anything? Ah, ah. Hello there. What's your name? Lily. I know. Not very original. Do we not get to speak with Doggy? What about here? Can we look at the plants? Interesting. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses? Our national emblem. God save the Queen. Ah, yes. It must take patience uh, and care yes. to make the so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Fascinating. Familiar spine? Is this what I found in my dustbin? Yes. Wait, wait. Oh, come. Ah! The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. Oh, I'm glad we came outside. Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? Oh, excuse me. Sneeze at the worst time as we were just about to interrogate you, Lily, for clearly being a member of the underworld. Let's observe you. That doesn't sound perverted at all. Apologies, it was not meant that way. The brooch, the brooch must be important. A morning brooch. Honoring deceased husband. Okay, what about the lady's face? Wearing makeup for beauty or concealment? Oh. Hmm, concealment. One would assume if they're being attacked, it's to cover bruises. I don't see any additional swelling, unless that's what this was trying to say. Luxury fabric. Unusual for work attire. Indeed. Eyes. Avoids eye contact or distracted. Avoids eye contact. Has something to hide. Excuse me as I just uh, kneel down in front of you, Lily. Don't read anything into it. Uh, the boots. Boots always tell something. Clean boots. Change shoes upon arrival. Oh! <laughs> that jumped to the top and make me jump. Honouring deceased husband. Unusual for work attire. For beauty or concealment. Change boots upon arrival. We get to make... I mean, we've only just been introduced as Lily and now it's Mrs. Fleming. I'm going to guess Fleming's the name of maybe the shop sign. Ready to move on? Or still grieving? Let's have a look. Mrs. Fleming wears a mourning brooch in memory of her late husband. Her dress is made from an expensive fabric that is not suitable for work. Her shoes sew no traces of mud. She must have changed them when she arrived. Her eyes constantly dart around the street, seemingly in search for something. Or perhaps she is waiting for someone. While Mrs. Fleming cherishes the memory of her departed husband, she is trying to move on, as suggested by her. Oh, by her makeup and nice outfit. I was about to say, she didn't say it out loud. Perhaps she is dressing to attract someone's attention, or simply because she has learned to love herself again. Maybe. Still grieving! Mrs. Fleming uses makeup to hide her tear stained cheeks. Tear stained cheeks? They would be stained and obvious if she was wearing makeup, surely. Her dress is made from an expensive fabric that is not suitable for outside work. Yep, so that one's the same. Whilst she tries to bury her grief by dressing extravagantly, she still wears a mourning brooch. Uh, I'm going to call it brooch because that's what I'm familiar with, but it, although it phonetically that's read as brooch, I don't know which is accurate or if it's a translation thing, as I believe that this game was made by a team in Ukraine. Doesn't matter. Uh, in memory of her late husband, her gaze always staring off into the distance reveals her emotional detachment. Ooh. But then there is the stinger from the cactus. Taken as a whole, one must conclude that Mrs. Fleming is still reeling from her tragic loss. It's it's the whole eyes 
Her eyes constantly dart around the street in search of something or waiting for someone involved, ready to move on. I'm going to say, respectful with the brooch, but ready to move on. That's my portrait. Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Mm. Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. I'll be off. Well, well no, 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 I want to provide evidence. What am I providing evidence of? Cactus spy. Yes. I don't know anything about this. Sorry. Um. Yes. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome hmm. spines can prove a devil to remove, and the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. Interesting. Claims she doesn't know how the cactus appeared on her display. She went for a break. When she came back, it was there. So it's whomever has been looking after the shop in her mourning absence from the loss of her husband. How suspicious is the potential loss of her husband? Could it be the result of gang work? She didn't do as she was told. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. Anything else we might possibly... Hmm. There's more provide evidence. I'm curious as to what this could be. But I don't know if there's a case of... If I just spam through every single one, is she going to... Is there like a, a score for how open she is to communication? So, for example, if I spam through everything, is her impression of me going to reduce to the point that she doesn't want to reveal anything at all? So I'm going to be cautious. Dead flowers on display? What do you make of the flowers ah. in the shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. Oop. Interesting. More evidence? And again, I am... Presuming that that option is only there because there is more information to get and it will simply expire once I have expired all communication. Exotic plants catalog. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. I can't think of anything else that I have. Unless I was to go for the character reference, that'd be a bit weird. Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. I'll be off. Hmm. Did I gather everything I needed to there? Wrong button. Okay, roses for sale, not as important. Cactus in a cracked pot. Yes, the dirtied hands. Observations. Starting to doubt whether... I still think that's accurate. There's nothing new in documents and testimonies. Unless I can get anything else out of a testimony from Mrs. Fleming here. Provide evidence is still highlighted. Unless I can only provide the evidence. 
go with Mr. Barnes. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in hmm. a way. What on earth does that mean? Yes. I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And ah. most of Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would etch such longing onto his face. Definitely ready to move on, Mrs. Fleming. We need to... The weather is dreary, isn't ah, it? Ah, and we have expired could use the rainfall. our options. So, back to the store. Whilst we dry off, in remarkably quick fashion by the state of my coat, has anything new unlocked within our green options? Mrs. Fleming on Barnes. Why is he acting so strangely? Must be. And then blue. Broken ladder. Could have just been a normal accident. Cryptology books, not related at all. Book from Barnes, a simple delivery. We've already investigated the cactus spine, have we not, in the previous question? No, that was just the book from Barnes. So the cactus spine could be the blue one, or the cactus in a cracked pot. We have used the cactus in the cracked pot for discussion with Mrs. Fleming. So the cactus spine potentially poisoned is where we need to go. Oh, I really hope we do this first time. Or the exotic plants catalogue that we discovered here. The weird thing is, though, the cactus spine and the exotic plants kind of relate to each other, not to Barnes's strange behaviour. The exotic plants catalogue seems more of an explanation as to how we would know about the cactus spine being poisonous. Let's go with this one. Damn it. Okay. Um, these two have remained in place. Is that because they're correct? <clears throat> the catalogue then. It. All right, the is in the cracked pot. So it was that one. Mr. Barnes is in love with Mrs. Fleming. Barnes displayed a bouquet of dead flowers to attract the attention of Mrs. Fleming, a florist. He may hope that she will come into his shop and give him some watering advice, or it could simply be a symbol of his desperation. Barnes anonymously gifted her a cactus, which he ordered from the catalogue on the counter. A questionable choice, but for Barnes, a symbol of his eternal love. Since the catalogue presents, Cacti is immortal for everlasting love. Should have gotten that. Damn it. Ah, plainly this is the same cactus he dropped on the Strand, outside of 221B Baker Street. And now, to hear the full story. Fascinating. Hmm. I uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Could still be more, but... Oh, of course, because I've pinned this thing which my face has been covering for a while, and my apologies to any of you frustrated, be like, I don't know what that says! Um, whatever I pin is put into the top right corner, so it's just a bit of evidence. It's the Mr. Barnes is involved in the crime. If I unpin it now, it's now been removed. So apologies for anyone who's been frustrated for gosh knows how long now. Um, resolved. There we go. Mr. Barnes? 
I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well. <laughs> uh, my paper was ruined. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Loud noise was the hot plant being dropped. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. Overworked. You are her secret admirer. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Why was he so happy and eager to hide then? No, it must be a part of something else. So, you know what happened then? I was on my way back from the post office having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy too. And when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your Sorry. clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless it's to this sort true. of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. Oh, she has. Oh, oh. Well, honestly, it should be. This isn't really my area, but I'm a sucker for love. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts, and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you, and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... <laughs> That's yes, oddly logical, Mr. Spock. I do have a slight <laughs> tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? Or do you have a copy I, I may take? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. Shall you do. Have the issue of the Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. Love so it. you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh no, uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and and uh, yes, the occult. Yes, okay. Just give me the paper. The occult. Salt Peter explosion rocks docks. Good title. Locals at the port of London had a rude awakening last night, with loud bangs and thick red smoke disturbing the peace. Merchant skip Moskva had docked at Pier N3 in the early evening en route to Europe, when it was rocked by several concussive explosions. The port authority is yet to comment on the incident and it is unknown if any of the crew members were on board at the time. Eyewitnesses report seeing saltpeter leaking into the river. But with the area still off limits to workers and to the public, it may be some time before we have a full account of what transpired. Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. Well, there we go. A couple of really fascinating investigations done. And I've already learnt my lesson that I was a little bit too hasty on poor Mr. Barnes here. Or was I? Because I swear he was just about to reveal his knowledge for the occult, as we know by the book that we've seen right here. And uh, everything in the display as well. This man can read Cthulhu. But we'll have to wait until next time to see if that will be revealed to us or if we're just going to have to you know, stumble upon that ourselves. But I really do hope that you have enjoyed this first episode into me playing Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. I really greatly appreciate your patience as this is, as mentioned at the start, the first time I have played any of the Sherlock Holmes series made by these game makers. So as a result, all of the mechanics and means of interacting with the game are totally new to me. So thank you for your patience. Really hope that you're interested in watching more of this as interested as i am in playing more of it i'll see you next time